We've made it to the end of an offseason for the Kansas City Royals and for Major League Baseball. What's the best, worst, and most likely case scenario for your Kansas City Royals and what to look forward to throughout the 2022 MLB season? All of that and more coming up on today's Lockdown Royals podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. You are Locked On Royals, your daily Kansas City Royals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Royals podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I'm your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Royals. And on today's show, we're going to dive into the Kansas City Royals and the season that is upon us this week. We've made it through another offseason. We've made it through another uh, treacherous CBA negotiation and now it's just time to celebrate. It's now just time to straight up celebrate the Royals coming back to town, hosting the Guardians. We've made it. It's baseball time in Kansas City. Some exciting news like Bobby Witt Jr. making the opening day roster. We had our roundtable with all the other AL Central hosts. We've had a fun time this offseason and some ups and downs, but it's now time to talk about the actual MLB season. And in this episode, let's just dive into what the best, worst, and most likely case scenarios are for the Kansas City Royals. And I want to first start out with just baseball. Baseball's back. We're going to be watching games that actually matter starting today. And it's just so fun. It's just so fun to be a part of. I think that people who don't understand baseball have just simply never tried to or just simply don't have an attachment to a team. I think that there's arguments for and against every sport. There's arguments for the NBA. There's arguments against baseball, for baseball. Same thing with the NFL, same thing with the NHL. But I think that the the main argument for baseball is once you get attached to a team for whatever reason, and it's passed down from you know, your family, like it was for me, you moved to a different city, you were born in a city, you saw a cool uniform on television. You saw a cool player on television. However you gain that attachment, that's your end to baseball. Whereas in the NBA and the NFL, it is more fun to watch a national game that you have no interest in, right? In the sense of rooting interest. It's a lot harder to watch a baseball game for most casual fans, not the diehard fans, but casual fans, that they have no rooting interest in. But whenever you find that emotional connection, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like baseball every day. Coming home, whatever's happening in your life, and shutting it off for three hours a day. Rarely an off day. And there's nothing like Royals baseball. And this goes to any team, but, but we'll talk about the Royals here. There are so many great moments that it feels like only you and I have shared as Royals fan. It feels like if you asked a thousand baseball fans, we could bring up moments that none of them would know. Players that none of them would know or remember. But you and I have core memories with Chris Getz, Kia Kahui, Bruce Chen. We have core memories of Brett Eibner capping off the biggest comeback in Royals history in a meaningless game against the White Sox in the early season. We have shared experiences, despite being total strangers, that only a handful of people in the world know about. Baseball is extremely intimate. It's extremely fraternal. It's extremely, it's extremely bonding. There's nothing like good baseball. Kansas City's been lucky enough to see a World Series run in 2014 that you lost in Game 7, a World Series run in 2015 that you won in dramatic fashion in New York, and we had the Game 1 Gordon home run, the Mad Dash home in Game 5. And they've also been lucky enough to see what I think is the best quarterback of all time, Patrick Mahomes. Now, again, I'm only 25 years old, so 
you older generation out there might say Johnny Unitas or somebody else, but in my for my money, it's Patrick Mahomes. And I just want you to think what run was more special. Was it the whole city being painted blue and everybody buying anything that had Royals on it, including milk cartons, whenever they were going to the World Series? Or was it the Patrick Mahomes cereal boxes and the 16, now 17 games you had to spend with the Chiefs? And then immediately dread the offseason and dread the moves and, and worry about the future? Or was it the blissful 162-game marathon that culminates in the best postseason in, in, in all sports. The only argument would be the NHL playoffs, which are honestly really good. But and that's even as, as me, who I have watched zero regular season hockey games. I'll watch the Stanley Cup playoffs, though. That's just how I've always been. But I'll take the baseball playoffs over the hockey playoffs, although I have to acknowledge that they're a good playoff system. And that's why that you love baseball. You love baseball because... You're sharing experiences with none of your, your family or your friends, but complete strangers, and they get forgotten more often. I think that, you know, in football, it's harder to have those secret memories, right? Those secret experiences. Because everybody's watching Red Zone. Everybody's, you know, watching Sunday Ticket. Everybody's keeping tabs on every team because everything's important. In baseball, there's too many games. There's hardly any important games on a national stage, so it creates important games for just regional fan bases. And that continuity, those shared scars and shared successes that are shared between one or two fan bases max, you know, the two teams playing that day, that's special. That's fun. That's what baseball's all about. And in my opinion, I've seen it all. I've seen my favorite basketball teams, Win championships, the Chiefs win a Super Bowl, go to a couple more. And for my money, right, nothing was as special as the baseball championship, as that World Series in 2015, and even the run in 2014. I can remember every detail of the 2014 postseason, 2015 postseason. You remember the highlights of the, football, of the football postseason. So, like, I think that that's just kind of the big difference for each sport. In my opinion, baseball is the way to go, and I'm just so glad it's back so we can share moments that no matter how this season goes on will be relevant to probably only a couple thousand people. And that just feels kind of cool. It feels kind of exclusive, an exclusive club to be in. But coming up, what's the best, worst, and most likely case scenario for the Kansas City Royals? We're going to find out on the Lockdown Royals podcast. On the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. We are back on the Lockdown Royals podcast. On the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. I'm your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at Lockdown Royals. Email the show, LockdownRoyals at gmail.com. Thank you for making Lockdown Royals your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Royals baseball. Subscribe for free across all platforms, including the platform of YouTube. And for your second listen today, go check out the Locked On MLB podcast. Uh, the Locked On MLB po- prospect podcast. That's difficult. Two P's in a row. Tough. Locked On MLB prospects podcast hosted by Lindsey Crosby. He's a, he's a prospect encyclopedia. He goes deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available across all platforms and the, MLB, the MILB season is already underway, so go check out uh, Lindsey Crosby over there at MLB Prospects. We're back on the Lockdown Worlds podcast, and so let's talk about the best, worst, and most likely case scenario. Let's start with the best case scenario for the Royals. The best case scenario is postseason baseball. This team could make the postseason, and not just could in the sense of, well, you know, we haven't even played a single regular season game yet, so obviously any team could technically make it. No, this team has a legitimate shot to go to the postseason in the expanded playoffs and with a uh, getting better division and improving division, but not a division that's just a powerhouse like, say, the AL East. But it takes a lot to go right for Kansas City, and that's where you get into some trouble. Because if you're a team that has a lot of what-ifs, 
and they're likely not going to all break your way. So you're looking for Whit Merrifield to bounce back. You're looking for Bobby Witt Jr. to be an elite stud right out of the gate. What if those two things happen? What if Salvador Perez duplicates his MVP caliber season? What if Andrew Benatendi stays fully healthy? What if one of Carlos Santana or Hunter Dozier has a bounce back season? What if Mondesi stays healthy? What if Nicky Lopez duplicates his best hitting season of his entire career? Same with Michael A. Taylor. Can even just one of them hit on that fact? So you need one of Lopez and Michael A. Taylor to either be steady or improve. You need one of Carlos Santana or Hunter Dozier to bounce back. And you need, of course, health from Benatendi and Mondesi. Not to mention no regression from, from Perez, who had an unbelievable MVP-level season. Not to mention you need a rookie, Bobby Witt Jr., to just burst onto the scene immediately and become a, a superstar. And you need Whit Merrifield to have, it a, have a better season than he did last year. That's just for the lineup. For the rotation, you need, a, you need the young arms to take a step. And this one's not as scary to me. The lineup stuff, you know, it, it is scary to be depending on Benatendi's health and Mondesi's health. It is scary to be depending on Carlos Santana, who's over the hill at age 36 and, you know, probably can't bounce back. Not to mention Hunter Dozier, who's, you know, you get a, a contract extension to, but he's still not great. And you wonder if he's even going to have a chance to bounce back or if his good year was a fluke. And then, of course, you're depending on a rookie who I think will be excellent. I think that Bobby Witt Jr. will be incredible at age 21. I, I drafted him my fantasy team. I think he's going to be great, right? But the lineup has a ton of what ifs and, and, and some scary ones. The rotation for me is just a more granular topic because, look, you're going to need a combination of Brad Keller, Chris Bubich, Carlos Hernandez, Brady Singer, Daniel Lynch to be good. Jackson Coar as well, if I didn't say him, name already. You're going to need three or four of those guys to be really good. You're going to need Zach Grinke to teach those guys how to pitch, how to be an OB pitcher, how to be professional, and how to maneuver a long season. Brad Keller. You need three or four of those guys to work, plain and simple. If, those, if that does not happen, if you don't get three or four breakouts from any of those guys, then there's no shot at the best-case scenario. There's no shot. Whereas with the lineup, if you don't have Carlos Santana or Hunter Dozier bounce back, you call up Nick Prado. You call up MJ Melendez. You see if they can do it. You see if they can carry the load. There is no other option for the rotation. There just isn't. And furthermore, if this lineup does not produce, even though it's a very interesting lineup on paper, it does not set you back any from your 2023 goals necessarily. If we finish this entire season, and two or three of Brad Keller, Chris Bubich, Brady Singer, Carlos Hernandez, Jackson Kowar, Daniel Lynch, have not taken a significant step into being a top-end starter, you know, one or two, or even a three, then this entire rebuild has failed, and you're not going to compete in 2023. You're going to have to restart, and it's all going to be a disaster. That's your worst-case scenario. That can quickly become your best-case scenario, right? If you get that to happen, you, know, you get those breakout pitchers to happen, it's your best case scenario you're going to go to the postseason. But if they don't break out, if they're bad, I don't see a way where you compete in 2023. Because this entire rebuild is predicated on these young arms. Bobby Wood Jr. is the best prospect in baseball. He's going to be a superstar. He's going to be awesome. You can't do it alone. The bulk of this rebuild has been casted upon college arms. Brady Singer, Asa Lacey, the aforementioned pitchers. They've got to produce at some point. And if not now, then you have to start questioning when. And again, I say this is what it's all been about. This is the MLB, you know, this is the this is the rebuild. It's been about pitching because it's the currency of baseball. I like the bullpen. I like Barlow. I like Stama. I like Brents. I think Amir Garrett brings an edge that the that the Royals didn't have before. I do think Jackson Core is going to be a bullpen arm and not a starter. 
that takes away from the pool of pitchers that could produce in their the rotation. But I think Jackson Cora will be a very good bullpen arm. I really do. But that limits you in the starting capacity. So now your starters go back to just Keller, Bubich, Hernandez, Singer, Lynch, Lacey. And you need, you need three or four of those guys to hit and hit in a massive way. Can they do it? If they can, and the lineup stays as steady as it looks on paper, this is a playoff team. The worst case scenario is Montessi gets hurt again, but attendee plays half a year in a contract year. None of your starting pitchers took a step at all. One or two regress, and your rebuild just goes from this team's on the cusp to this team has no direction and has to restart again. That's the worst case scenario. The most likely case scenario to me, Zach Grinke's a fine starter for the Royals. Brad Keller is mediocre. One of Chris Bubich, Carlos Hernandez, Brady Singer, or Daniel Lynch burst onto the scene and they show that they're you know a one or two level arm in their rotation. And then the rest just show flashes. I mean, Carlos Hernandez last year showed flashes. Chris Pubich last year showed flashes, but they don't take that next step. And then you kind of regroup in the offseason and see where you can start to put the pieces together. I think that that's what's going to happen. I think that in that process, though, you mix in the burst on the scene from one of those top pitchers. You mix in the flashes from the other two or three. And you mix in what I think will be a very solid lineup. The most likely case scenario to me is that you finish five games out of the postseason. Best case scenario is you're in the postseason. Didn't win the division, but you're in the postseason. The worst case scenario to me is, again, your rotation falls apart and you finish 12-plus games out of the playoffs with the expanded postseason. Then you're really lacking direction. It's opening day, hunky-dory season, but let's not forget, for five years, this organization has sold you on 2022. Once we got to 2022, they said, well, it's actually going to be 2023. They kicked the can down the road one more year. If the goal is really 2023, after the saying was 2022 all this time, the goal is really 2023, then you have to show significant improvement this year. And you can't be a laughing stock this year. Because as much as we have a ton of optimism this time every year in baseball, and every fan base does, if you finish. 12, 13, 14, 15 games out of the postseason. You can't make that up in one offseason. You cannot make that up in one offseason, especially not in Kansas City. You need to be on the cutting edge of the postseason, if not in there, this year. Or else this offseason, there's going to be a lot of tough questions and a lot of tough decisions and a lot of Forks in the road where they could go either direction with this rebuild. In my opinion, barring a disaster, barring a ton of injuries, barring a ton of just unexpected things happening like Salvador Perez falling off a cliff, I don't see a way that the worst case scenario happens. It's still there. It technically could still happen. But in my opinion, this team will be either five games out of the postseason, give or take a game, obviously, duh, it's baseball, or in the postseason. That's the bottom line. And that results in a very long summer, a very fun summer, and one you can be proud of, one that you can spend now that we're past all the pandemic stuff and we're kind of getting back into normal-ish, right, obviously, as normal as we can be anymore. It's going to be a fun summer to go to the ballpark. You can expect to win every single night, right, or at least not, a, not expect a loss. right? You can expect a fighting chance every night. And just have fun. Again, likely case scenario, five games out of the playoffs, so not in the playoffs, but still, to be that close, you have to have a fun ride. Look at the Mariners last year. They were very close, didn't make it. I think they're like a game or two out instead of five, but still, those fans wouldn't trade that season for the, for the world, and it casted a huge momentum boost heading into this season. So, a lot on the line for Kansas City this year. I think this year will be a... Huge stepping point in the rebuild. And I'll tell you why coming up. But first, I want to tell you right now, but your friends over at Built Bar. Built Bar is a fantastic protein bar. 
that tastes just like a candy bar. Go to BuiltBar.com. Use the promo code LOCK15. Get 15% off of your next order. Built.com, promo code LOCK15. 15% off your next order. Most bars have 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. You compare that to a candy bar, which is typically around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and a dozen net carbs. You need to get your hands on Built Bar. They have mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and even white chocolate cookies and cream. My personal favorite flavor is cookies and cream and also white chocolate cookies and cream. So test them out today. Built.com, promo code LOCK15, 15% off your next order. Built.com, promo code LOCK15, 15% off of your next order. We are back on the Lockdown Royals podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. I'm your host, Rylan Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at Lockdown Royals. I'm going to give you my baseball takes over there. Thank you for listening to Lockdown Royals, your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you. Talking Royals baseball. For your second listen, go check out the Lockdown MLB podcast. The Lockdown MLB podcast is hosted by Paul Francis Sullivan, but you can call him Sully. It brings you a unique perspective on the major leagues past and present. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts from. Free and available, just like we are, wherever you get podcasts from. So why would this year be a huge step in the Royals' rebuild? As I explained the worst-case scenario, you cannot all fly on your face again this year. You cannot be as streaky as you were in the last three years and still say that you're going to compete in 2023. And if you can't compete in 2023, then you have to start Making tough calls. Is Whit Merrifield really a part of the future? Is Ben Attendee really a part of the future? Obviously, you're gonna you're gonna cut bait with Carlos Santana. Hunter Dozier, another big question mark. Because if you if you hit your worst case scenario, Hunter Dozier played very poorly. And you have guys waiting in the wings. Is Mondesi somebody you can keep holding out hope for? And the most pressing issue would be for you to fall flat on your face. It'll come via the young pitching not performing. And that's what the whole team is built upon. That's what the hope is built upon. To me, if this team falls flat on its face, you have to start over and, and, and just start from scratch. Only saving Bobby Witt Jr. and Salvador Perez. And that's a scary proposition, but I don't think that's going to happen. And honestly, I've got a good feeling this could be a playoff team. If I had to pick, I already told you that I do not believe that the worst case scenario is going to happen. I do not believe in the worst case scenario, but it is there. So I have to bring it up. If I had to pick between where I would lean, if you put on a line graph, is that what they're called? A line graph? the most likely case scenario I, I lined out and the most optimistic, you know, best case scenario I lined out. I'm closer towards the best case scenario than even the most likely case scenario, if that makes sense. I'm leaning towards, hey, this team can make a run and be a dark horse and surprise people in the postseason and get to the postseason by surprising people. But you just have to bring up all three areas. We'll see if I'm right or wrong on that optimism or if it's just fool's gold as we head into another season. But... I really do believe this team could be a playoff team, and I do believe if they make it or don't make it, it'll be a fun ride to get there. And I cannot wait to take you through it all on the Lockdown Royals podcast on Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. Subscribe for free across all platforms so you never miss an episode. Until next time, be good. Be good to one another.